The National Legends Cars Championship is brought to you in association with All Growth Limited. Hello everybody, welcome to the very first round of the 2023 National Legends Cars Championship here from the gorgeous Cadwell Park. Conditions are looking interesting, everybody's excited for the season ahead and it's certainly going to be a great way to kick off our campaign this year. Two separate Legends campaigns this year, the Elite Cup supporting the touring cars, we'll see them at Brands Hatch Croft and Knock Hill Circuit, but our focus on the All Growth Legends Cars Championship starts here at Cadwell, we go to Brands Hatch in June, Snethson in October and the big fireworks at Brands Hatch in November. So Phil, another campaign gets underway. 2023 is back for the legends. You must be very excited and we've got decent weather for the first round. Ish. <laughs> Ish. It's yeah. still chilly. Uh, yes, um, first event of the year and it's our 29th season. So that's quite a record to go by. Um, very excited. A bunch of characters have returned that have, uh, haven't raced for us for years and years. It's nice to see all, all these coming back, joining me, the, old, the original oldie. Um, I would say that uh, this is probably the best season going forward that we have had in our history with the events uh, starting here at Cadwell, moving on through and joining the touring car programme of the three events. It's going to be spectacular and of course an awful lot of people will see us that never ever heard of Legends before. It's the best kept secret in motor racing. So, and well, I was, I was going to say, that's the thing, you know, the fact that such a fantastic championship and a great form of going racing is just so undiscovered by so many people, even now, after 29 years. It's, it's, a, it's a massive shame, but it's great to have that, you know, that capability to get out there with the BTCC as well, get on that package, isn't it? Sure, absolutely. Uh, and when you think of the fact that uh, we have been around for so long and we've still got very healthy grids, yeah. even at these d difficult times for you know, spending money, it's a, it's a hobby and a quarter, this one. It, it's just everybody loves it. And like I said, we've got people that have come back, that have went away years ago, but they miss it and they come back and have another go. It's, it's, it's amazing. And that's the ultimate compliment for it as well. And like you say, there's new drivers coming to the paddock as well. I've got a couple of friends that are actually starting in it this year as well. And the racing speaks for itself when you get these rookies in that still want to give it to the big boys, you know, the, the established names in the championship. You know, there's never a, a sort of a set form of how the weekend's going to go, is there in Legends? No. Absolutely, it's uh, you know when you see so much so much overtaking, uh, the excitement factor, the, uh, plus the the bump drafting that we can provide, having steel bumpers front and rear means that you can actually touch cars and you can have four cars touching going down the main straight, and they break off before the the I think they break off before yeah, the first corner. Yeah, <laughs> well, Phil, I'm sure it's going to be another fantastic year. Thanks very much for talking to me and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Oh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. You brought the sun. Paul Mazel returns to the Legends Car Series after many years away and draws pole position for race number one with Mick Bridgman alongside, Miles Rubman and Lenny Woodcock row two, Chris Needham and Charlie Budd on row three, Florian Robin and James Newbury are on the fourth row of the grid. So Paul Mazel, no pressure Paul on your return and away we go, they break ranks, they are racing here and heading down into Coppies for the first time. Who's going to emerge in lead position? It's Miles Rudman in yellow and blue. Going through as well is Chris Needham in the black 13. New number of livery for Chris this year, the ex-Supercarter. But the leader 
picking up where he left off at Brands Hatch last year in a different vehicle. Last year raced in a 34 Coupe, he's in the 37 Savan now, and there's a change for the lead. We're looking on from Nick Bridgman in third place, and going into the lead, it's Chris Needham. Needham leads. Now up into third place, another change of livery, black and orange this year for Will Gibson. So Gibson wasn't even in the front four rows that we called. It's already up into third place, the runner-up in last year's championship. So Will, uh, and there's a multi-champion, John Mickle making a pass as they head down towards the mountain for the first time. The downhill run and then in the dip and then a big uphill run into the mountain. We'll see the cars very shortly head up the hill, which is around about where they're heading now. Here we go, the left-hander, and let's just stop a moment and enjoy the 1250 Yamaha engines. Chris Needham, the race leader then. I've got to say, it's been a, a very good opening few corners for these cars. They're around about two-thirds of the way around the first lap of the season, and all looking pretty good so far. Oli Schlupp battling it out with the, the man who he raced so hard with last year for the Rookie Championship, that is Ben Higgins. We've got Ben's dad, Mark Higgins, multi-rally champion in the mix as well this weekend, which is good to see. Uh, it was Ben Higgins that won the Rookie Championship last year from Oli Schlupp. It went down to the last race of the year at Brands Hatch, very close between the two, both would have been deserved champions, but it went the way of Ben Higgins, who is back and will be challenging to be a front-runner overall this year. Ben on the inside there of Mark Beattie, Oli Schlupp in the orange and blue car still ahead of them. The Park Lane Cars machine, Park Lane of course handing over to Allgrove this year. Now big thanks to all concerned as John Mickle puts the green car under pressure, John in the multi-coloured livery. Still the quick steel car for John, but a different livery for the man who has been five times champion and not out of the top three in the championship for the last eight seasons. Florian Robin 97, 31 is 2000 champion. Rob Fountain won it the year before John Mickle's first title all those years ago. And Mickle looking on the inside run. BT goes wide, Mickle's through. So John Mickle picking his way through the grid. Still Chris Needham out front, now up into second position. Has got Will Gibson, the reigning champion, is down to third. Now on board with Oli Schlupp. Nick Bridgman started on the outside of the front row. This is actually the, the scene of Nick Bridgman's race win here at Cadwell Park. Nick, a race winner in the championship. Goes out of the hairpin and will run down towards Barn Corner, then... That's Barn Corner, and then down the hill to tick off another lap. So the race leader, and looking pretty good here at the moment, is Chris Needham. 3-2-1 car is Lenny Woodcock, that's a team car, so he'll be sharing with his son, Lenny from Chichester in Sussex. As still, I tell you what, it's getting closer for the lead because Will Gibson is closing up on Chris Needham and now there's the bump drafting that Phil was talking about in the interviews earlier on. Very close indeed, Miles Rudman just racing today but will be in the Elite Cup as well with the Touring Car Championship. It's Miles' son's birthday tomorrow, so he's off celebrating that. They won't see him in programme too. But great that Nathan Anthony has given Miles the chance to help the uh, prolific nature now. They are going to be prolific, the Savans. There's the other one, I think, in bother at the back, just going out of shock. And a little bit of a, a turnaround, and it is Nathan Anthony in the first Savans 29 Savan on the grass, but recovers. So we've got Van at the front and Van very much in the midfield at the moment. Here come the three leaders, Miles Rudman is not, or Miles Rudd Van as they're calling him now, is not being left as they come up and through the mountain once again. Then they go into Hall Benz. Still Chris Needham out front, Will Gibson in second position. I think probably right to say that Needham with a bit more track experience here as the supercarts have visited many, many times when Chris was racing in that formula. That take nothing away from the guy, doesn't matter where you place him or what machine he's racing in, he is fast. There is Miles Rubman trying to get a uh, bigger part. Nathan Anthony back on track. We've got the confusion now, two spans. There's Miles Rubman, a third of these cars as Will Gibson continues to harry for the lead. They go into Coppice, the left hander round Charlie's, the long right hander, which will put them onto Park Straight. This is where we saw 
when they get on the straight bit. This is where we saw the pass for the lead on lap number one. I tell you what, getting away at the moment, it does look as if Chris Needham has got the legs over Will Gibson in second position. Miles Rudman in the Savan is in third, but now Gibson closes up, looks on the inside run here, and Gibson goes through. There was a gap, Will Gibson managed to catch the race leader and go through the man who was runner-up in the championship last year, racing as ever in memory of his late brother Tim. He's one of our new rookies there, Andrew Rogerson, 113 car. Good to see Andrew up and running. And dicing with Luke Simmons, one of last year's rookie front runners as well. Great to see Luke. Sad to see Luke's dad not racing this year, but very much supporting Luke. And down behind them is Daniel Cooley, another of last year's rookies who's back this year to try and climb his way up the grid. Dan Pooley bringing along Nick Price uh, as well as a, as a teammate. He's the other rookie, former Grand Prix midget champion as well. Here they come down into Hall Bend again, and it's a battle on for second position now. Again, it's a job to know exactly where to look through the field. We've got a battle on for second position. Will Gibson, the race leader, fastest lap at the moment, is with Andy Bird in the number 30 car as we again pick up on the Savan. Across the line they go again, and it is Will Gibson leading. Chris Needham in second, Needham under pressure from Miles Rudman. Who knows whether this is the way the All Growth Championship is going to develop over the course of the year with these three, but don't forget John Mickle, who was drawn further back. John will be in the mix as well. So too, I'm sure, with the likes of Oli Schlup, Ben Higgins, the reigning rookie champion, many, many other drivers like Andy Bird. As we get a change for the lead and repaying the compliment, back into the lead goes Chris Needham. Needham from Gibson. Miles Rudman is in third place in the first for Vans machine, a little bit further back. Marcus Pett, another potential championship contender who was drawn a fair way back, is going through as well. Marcus, multi-race winner last year and could well be fancied with either of the, the two respective championships that we've got running this year. There is Paul Mazel in the green Gigabox car. As we go back to the race leaders, climbing up the mountain once again in the opening race of the year. The car's coming out of Barn Corner. This is the penultimate lap of the opening race of the 2023 season. It's Chris Needham out front. Here's the chaser, Will Gibson in P2. Once they cross the line, just 2.1 miles to go around Cadwell Park for this opening race, and it could be any one of these three drivers. Could be anyone behind if these three fall off the circuit battling with each other, but I would say that's going to be pretty unlikely with drivers of this calibre. Gibson chasing, heading out of Charlie's onto Park Straight, which is actually far from straight, to be perfectly honest. This is where we've seen most of the passes done. Gibson will pick up a bit of a toe. He's got momentum and goes to the outside. Different tactic from his first pass earlier on in the race on Chris Needham, and he gets the job done through into the lead. Goes Will Gibson. Gibson the leader. Chris Needham second. Miles Rudman, or Rudvan as we're calling him now, is there. Battle for 10th place. Marcus Pett popping through on Rob Fountain. He's got Mark Beatty, the next man that he needs to close down on. But here come the race leaders. It is still Will Gibson, who will be looking in his mirrors now, the black 13 car of Chris Needham, the number one savan of Miles Rudman, the reigning champion, as they go up towards the mountain for the last time. Look at Rudman, he, he can play with whatever line he wants, he's under no pressure at all, only has the pressure that he might put on himself to try and get further up on the podium here. So the first savan's machine chasing the ex-supercarter, chasing Will Gibson, who is not putting a wheel wrong here so far, and will go through Barn Corner and downhill. It's the run to the checker flag. Is Gibson going to hold on? We ride on board with him as we come down towards the checker, and Gibson wins the opening race of the season. Chris Needham second, Miles Rudman in third. There's a good battle going on for fourth place. We're looking a little bit further back there. Here's the battle for fourth. It's John Mickle who has taken fourth position there, just ahead of his teammate Oli Schluck, then Charlie Budd in sixth from 
Ben Higgins, Nick Bridgman crossing the line there ahead of Marcus Pett. Pett actually getting the better of Mark Beatty on that last lap as well. But Will Gibson opens his account here for the 2023 season. It is a very long season as well with a win. Gibson, Needham and Rudman, your top three from John Mickle, Ollie Schlup, Charlie Budd, Ben Higgins seventh from Nick Bridgman and Marcus Pett. Mark Beatty wrapping up the top ten. Rob Fountain was next from Kieran Beatty. Fastest lap went to Andy Bird in 13th. Then Matthew Knight and Florian Robin. Luke Simmons 16th from rookie Andrew Rogerson. Mark Higgins next up from Nathan Anthony and Tyler Reed in 20th. Finishes completed by Paul Mazel, Daniel Pooley, Nick Price, James Newbury and uh, Mike Schlup with Lenny Woodcock in 26th. So I'm joined by Will Gibson. Will, very well done, mate. Fantastic first race of the weekend. Conditions aren't as bad as we thought they might have been at this time of year here at Cadwell. It looks all right. Yeah, I think we've been quite lucky. I mean, building up to it, the weather looked like it was going to be awful all weekend. But yeah, we're blessed with nice sunny weather. Uh, it was a bit wet this morning, but the track's dried nicely. So yeah, it's good. And obviously, first day of school for everybody again. What were your thoughts coming into it this weekend? Were you confident after last season or did you have to sort of start again with a new mental mindset? Uh, I mean, we finished really well. You know, we had a cracking year last year. Uh, this year, we brought a new sponsor, Electric Centre, along, and we just want to do them proud. And you know, to win the first race, we can't say thank you enough to them. Absolutely, yeah. There's not much better than that, to be fair. Now, um, obviously, with the new sponsor on board, does uh, do you feel a little bit more pressure as a driver to to perform a bit more, or is that just something that the media make us believe? Uh, I think the media make you believe it. I mean, for us. We, we want to have fun most importantly and winning is second and you know we, we love racing, we love doing this and yeah, to win the first race of the year is brilliant, Just uh, I, I think we need to win another 40 in a row and then we'll be happy. <laughs> right then Chris, a first race of the season, first day of school for everybody, I mean you've got a smile on your face, surely you enjoyed that one, even though you led early on, didn't quite get the win at the end but still, that's legends racing isn't it, it's very tough. Yeah that's it, it's so close, you, you never know who's going to come across the line in first place on that last lap if you're all together so yeah, I'll take that for the start of the season. It was better than last year's start of the season. So uh, we're actually in a rebuilt car that we wrote off two years ago as well. So it was a bit of an unknown for this weekend, but I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, yeah. So. And what sort of challenges has that given you so far then? What sort of niggles have you found with it? Stuff that needs changing or working on most? Absolutely none. No. None. No, my dad built it at home, rebuilt it at home in the workshop. Uh, we did one practice session yesterday. I was happy with the car straight away. Wow. Uh, so yeah, he's done a good job. Yeah, yeah. We did have an issue towards the end of the race. I got a very bad vibration in the last three laps, so I wasn't sure if it was going to make it to the end. So I think the differential might have gone, but we'll get it sorted for the next one. So Miles Rudman, fantastic start to your season. Obviously battling again with the guys you've been battling for so so long in this championship. Talk us through that first race because it looked like an absolute belter to get things underway. Yeah, it, it was it was a great race. Obviously it was close. Between between us three at the front and uh, you know a new year new challenge you know we've got a new car this year the sedan which is a uh, only a little bit different than the coupe so yeah just trying to get used to that really but I'm happy with the uh, result we got there in the first race so yeah really good and what sort of main differences do you feel as a driver with the different car as well I noticed it out on track and I thought it looks great because it it looks a little bit more fun you know it's not the traditional shape that you see everybody else running yeah, for sure. It's quite a bit different, really. On on the uh, back end, it's a bit heavier than the coupe, so they're quite light. So, yeah, you tend to get a bit more grip. So I think we just need to make a few little tweaks to the next one, and uh, hopefully we can get that right. So, you know, yeah, it was uh, it, it was great. So it was a good race. Mark Higgins, welcome to the championship, my friend, for another season. Um, we've just been discussing, though, that it's going to be a bit of a short-lived performance for you this year, but to have you and your boy on the grid, it's a fantastic thing to have, isn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, to get the chance to drive with my son on the same track is great. Um, it was a bit of a one-off thing, really. I was, uh, there was an opportunity to drive a car. Now I'm thinking it's not a good idea and I can concentrate on him, but uh, the, the main focus is really Ben this year. He had a good season last year and uh, hopefully he can continue this year, but uh, I'm going to have a fun day out. Cadwell's a great circuit and um, yeah, should be great. 
I was going to say that seems to be the overall consensus in the paddock that the circuit is an amazing place to start the year as well. It's a real test of not just the drivers but the cars as well, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think Cadwell's great when you're on your own. Maybe when there's 30 cars around you, it might be a different story. And I'm not used to that with rallying. So, I mean, I haven't competed for a long time and it's great to be out doing something. And as I say, to be on the track with Ben will uh, hopefully be good and we'll all go home nice and happy. <laughs> well, is there, uh, is there any rivalry between the two of you then? Just, just to make sure you've got that sort of bragging rights within the family before you go home? No, I think he's going to want me this time. So, uh, but I'm actually quite happy for once. Uh, maybe five years ago it would have been different, but uh, no, I'm really proud of what he's doing and hopefully he can have a good year. Is there any potential that we could still see you back for later on in the season, though? Is there anything that we could do to coerce you? Yeah, maybe. Let's see how this weekend goes. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good few days. I, I can't wait to be in the car and enjoy it. So, yeah, there's always uh, possibilities. Second race of the day, Connor Mills and Luke Simmons on the front row. Dan Pooley and Andy Bird behind them from Marcus Pett and Mike Schlupp. Matt Knight on row four with Nathan Anthony. Will Gibson, of course, won race one. He did that from the fifth row of the grid. He's 18th on the grid in this one as we go Legends Cars Racing. And Luke Simmons in black and yellow being bump drafted by Andy Bird. And the pack behind on board with Marcus Pett. Marcus to the outside of Gareth Sheridan in the 99 car. And again, a fine sight and sound these cars make around Gabwell Park. Oh, and off goes Kieran Beatty in the 33 car. He's off and into the tyres. Early bath for Kieran. Here are the two main rookies from last year. Also the first two rookies in the championship from last year. As Andy Bird goes into lead. Bird leads. Simmons in second place. So changes for the lead again on lap number one. John Mickle looking on the inside of Daniel Pooley. Makes the pass, does John. Started further back, of course, in race number one. Therefore, will be ahead of what he might consider his main championship rivals as Oli Schlup goes to the grass, looks on the inside here of the man who finished second in race number one. That's Chris Needham, of course. Big sort out down the field. Schlup through on the inside, chasing Miles Rudman in the first for Van Savan out front. But it's Andy Bird from Luke Simmons side by side for third place, Connor Mills is doing the chasing at the moment, Connor in fourth place, Mike Schlupp in the number three holding a very good third place at the moment as Connor Mills goes back past Marcus Peck, Connor another returnee to the championship, good to see Connor back, the Essex lad in the number 19 car and will be a very quick driver indeed over the course of the season without a doubt, doing a lot of karting coaching nowadays. So it's Bird leading at the end of lap number one. Andy chasing his first win in the Legends Cars Championship. I tell you what, you'd be brave to bet against him again. A driver with bags of supercar experience. Here's Marcus Pett. Chasing Connor Mills. Bird out front. Luke Simmons in a good second position. Mike Schlupp holding a very good third as well here at the moment. There is John Nickel. Nickel Motorsport quite prolific in terms of the number of cars that they are running this year. Once again, strong supporters of the championship. John goes to the outside to try and effect a pass. And meanwhile, the field makes their way through. The 73 car, uh, a livery that we know from years ago. It was the livery that Chris Greve ran. The Beatty brothers running that car. It's Mark Higgins in that car. And now we catch up with Will Gibson, who's going to look on the inside of the former rally champion. Has to go on the grass to do so but makes the pass, so Will Gibson in black and orange making the pass, and incidentally the 73 car, we'll see Chris Greve in that car in the Elite Cup. Great to welcome another former champion back to Legends Cars. Back with Oli Schlupp. A little moment on the grass there for Chris Needham, who again recovers well, does Chris. Races hard and very capable of 
rectifying any issues such as going wide as Mark Beattie goes through shot. In car with Ollie Schlup as we head to a break here at Cadwell. So the second Allgrowth Legends cars race is shaping up very well indeed for Andy Bird at the moment, the race leader. The pack sorting themselves out. There they go, across the line. And on to lap three, there's Daniel Pooley, Matthew Knight in the treble two car, and Will Gibson working his way through the field as well. Gibson, rumour, started ninth on the green in race one, 18th in this one, so not quite mid-pack, but neither front nor back, but certainly further back on this race and making progress through the race one winner. There is John Mickel. John's had a problem, he's on his own, he's right at the back of the field. Thankfully, he's still going. He knows how important it is to score points so even if you're at the back any point five points ten points that you get for finishing can count towards the championship at the end of the year Connor Mills chasing Mike Schlup Mike looking at Matt Isherwood in the green and black car but there is Andy Bird the race leader huge lead over Luke Simmons at the moment Simmons a second generation driver his dad Paul will be watching here's Marcus Pep putting him under pressure Talking of second-generation drivers, Nick Paul Mazel's son is going to be joining us later on in the year in the Gigabox car, which will be great as Marcus Pett looks through on the inside. Heading up towards the mountain, great racing between Pett and Simmons Jr. there. And Marcus Pett up into second place. Connor Mills just trying to have a look at the inside of Mike Schlup. There's the 73 car going through shot. That is Mark Higgins. Oli Schlup coming through as well, Marcus Pett's got a problem, he's off, he's off on the grass, now did Marcus make a mistake? If he did, that has cost him because through has gone Matt issue ahead of Matt as they come to the end of lap number three, Luke Simmons still in second place, so it's Bird, Simmons, Isherwood. Now where is Marcus Pett going to wind up on that lap? I think that's a mechanical problem, no problems for Andy Bird who's out front, Pett is still fourth as they cross the line and up into second position onto lap four goes Matt Isherwood and there's a big problem for Marcus Pett who's fighting the car, that's why the wheel's off, there's a shaft sticking out of it, that, is, that can be dangerous, thankfully it's gone to the infield and away from the marshal's post, if that had gone into a marshal's post the unthinkable would have happened or alternatively of course the wheels could go in, into the outside of the track but thankfully it's come to rest okay so Matt Isherwood now second Luke Simmons is third wow it's all it's all going on and Marcus Pett will be gutted with that you, the one thing you don't need particularly with an eight round championship is a DNF because that really can hit the point scored sure you, you generally over the course of the years allow one but the shorter championship Daniel Clark was the driver of the Covid year that won the championship the shorter season had zero DNS and that's what the drivers are really going to be looking at we're on board with the all growth car there of Nick Bridgman so there is Matt Isherwood second place Luke Simmons is in third those two have got a little bit of a lead as they go into Hall Benz once again but Andy Bird out front it'll be very difficult for anybody to catch Andy but oh red flag so I'm guessing that's for Marcus Pett's car is it going to be a chequered flag as well one wonders we've they're on lap four so over half distance Daniel Pooley dicing with Matthew Knight and word coming through from race control I think that it is going to be a chequered flag in which case the result will go back to the end of rate, lap three where Luke Simmons was second indeed that's the result so Andy Bird wins from Luke Simmons and Matt Ishwood Andy Bird congratulations a first win for Andy Bird Luke Simmons a maiden podium in second position Matt Ishwood third and then Mike Schlutt in fourth place great result for Mike you know albeit an early finish but those guys were a, a way down the road it was going to take a lot of work for the other drivers to close in on those Nathan Anthony will take fifth place in the Savannah Will Gibson in six but Andy Bird grabs a maiden National Legends Cars Championship win from Luke Simmons Matt Isherwood next up Matt fastest lap of the race Mike Schlipp fourth Nathan Anthony Will Gibson sixth then Daniel Pooley career best seventh for him ahead of Matthew Knight and Mark Higgins in the 73 car next up from Miles Rudman Ben Higgins in 11th Chris Lee and Rob Fountain Ollie Schlupp Mark Beatty Andrew Rogerson 16th ahead of Gareth Sheridan and Tyler Reid Charlie Budd 19th from Nick Bridgman Nick Price in 21st, Lenny Woodcock next up from James Newbury and John Mickle 
those were the only finishers. Time now for a chat with Chaz. Andy, that was a, a shortened race, of course. Obviously, you had a very big lead, so I knew that maybe you'd want it to uh, end when it did at that point. But it seems like maybe a few more reasons for it to end a bit earlier would have been decent for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, great start. Um, worked with Luke going up the hill, managed to get the lead on the first lap and then just pulled a big gap. Um, nothing untoward when I was out there, actually. Uh, uh, and then the red flag came out, which is unfortunate for the other guys at the incident. Um, but I didn't think anything was wrong with the car until we came into Park Fermi and we rolled it back and heard a clonk. Uh, and um, and there's something happened in the diff. So I think maybe the red flag was a silver lining for me because um, I don't know how many more laps it would have lasted before uh, before the rear diff uh, had a problem. Um, so yeah, lucky, I think. Do you reckon you'll be out later then in the last race of the day? Yeah, we've got a spare axle. Just uh, the, the one for that race is out already uh, and we're, we're get the other one in and, um, and try and get it back on the flat patch and set up so it's nice and square and we'll go for the final. Luke, a very busy race of course mate, um, a very very short one unfortunately due to the incident but then again when you're battling at the front of this field I imagine it all goes by in the blink of an eye regardless of race length doesn't it? Yeah it was a, we got a great start to be fair, Andy Bird gave us a good push off the line and yeah we just head down, look forward and yeah didn't really realise that the red flag had come out and then realised how many laps was left and was, yeah, hoping that it wasn't going to be a restart. And what's the slipstream right like around here? Because I've had a few drivers say that it's really strong, but I wouldn't have expected it to be that bad here. I know the straight's long at Cadwell, but there's not many other straight bits to it, is there? No, yeah, it's quite crucial around here. As I say, Andy gave us a good toe down the, uh, push down the um, straight, which gave us a good lead going into uh, the third corner. So yeah, it's a big, big bonus, really. So Ben Higgins, back to the championship once again, reigning rookie champion. You must be pretty confident going into this year, mate. Yeah, I mean, we've had the car away at the weekend before, you know, through the winter and, uh, you know, changed some things, played around and got the car set up this weekend and uh, a few changes and hopefully we should go on to have a, a good first round, so yeah. And what's Cadwell like for you as a driver in these machines? Because obviously it's not been on the calendar for a few seasons, but it's like a roller coaster with trees around it from where we are. Yeah, it's definitely sketchy through the trees, but no, it's my first time here, so, uh, so far, it's been a really good experience. I'm enjoying the circuit to drive, but with 30, 20 cars on it, I mean, it's quite sketchy, to be honest, but no, it should be good. And what's it like for you knowing that, you know, coming into the, rook the rookie season last year, knowing that you can stick it to the big boys in this championship, you know, it, it must be a hell of a feeling to be able to battle like these guys can, because it's savage, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I mean, it was last year we had a good run, two podiums and uh, some good finishes, and I think that really driven us for this year to just even push harder. So uh, hopefully this year can all go good and just get some finishes really and obviously one of the talking points of this weekend you've got your old man out there as well what's the sort of family bragging rights like we asked him the same thing but obviously what's your take on it well he's coming for fun he says but no it's yeah we're, we're fine as long as we just stay out and don't hit each other i think it's i think it's all good cracking well they say in motorsport don't hit your teammates especially don't hit your dad eh? yeah definitely problems before the race gets underway sadly for James Newbury in two meter and a little wave that he's going to need to tow so bad news for the Sussex based man James Newbury that car a great favorite with the youngsters and indeed all families actually around the legends paddock it's Paul Mazel and Lenny Woodcock on the front row of the grid here with Gareth Sheridan and James Newbury James was due to be on row two Kieran Beattie and Florian Robin on row three then Mark Higgins and Marcus Pett away we go remember top point scorers from races one and two start at the back another reverse grid race on board with Nick Bridgman Mark Beattie was there in front of him in the 85 so the early sort out as they go out of coppice into Charlie's it's Paul Mazel the returning driver in the lead 
Gareth Sheridan in second place. Marcel's made a great start in the Gigabox car. Here comes Marcus Pett, though. He's in third place. He's going to side with the 99 car of Gareth Sheridan. Two become one, punch a bigger hole through the air. Sheridan's going to lead. Paul Marcel's going to try and hold on to the inside, but Marcel is down to third. Nonetheless, a very good opening part lap for the returning driver. In car with, or on board with Charlie Budd, looking at Mark Higgins, big on Ben Higgins. Knew we were going to get those two muddled up as we go through. Inside line on Steve Whiteleg happening there, but it's Gareth Sheridan. The race leader at the moment, Nathan Anthony in the 29 Savan goes through and past Lenny Woodcock. Lenny getting more and more experience of these Legends cars and always happy to take his place at the front of the grid uh, in a draw as Marcus Peck goes through. A repeat of the move that he did in race number two to take second position away from Luke Simmons. This time it was Gareth Sheridan who he passed going up towards the mountain. So Marcus Pett, I'll tell you what, he'd be very brave with Marcus's non finish in race two. That affords him a better start, lower on points in the first two races, starts nearer the front, so he's got the chance to get away. Matthew Knight nearly getting away there in the gold and black car. Paul Mazzell still hanging on, he's got Mark Higgins all over the back of him. Ben Higgins side by side with Mark Beattie in green. So Marcus Pett, the race leader, Gareth Sheridan is next up. Across the line they go, tick off uh, another lap in this eight lap third race, it's tempting to call it final, it's the final race, but remember the spoils of victory go to the top point scorers over the three races, it's not just the winner of this last race, Connor Mills running well there, putting Paul Mazzell under pressure, Connor in the blue and white 19 car, Paul in the green gigabox car, Lenny Woodcock gets a little bit tail happy with Will Gibson right behind him as well, then it's Mike Schlup, Nathan Anthony, I beg your pardon, Miles Rudman, I knew I was going to get the vans muddled up, Nathan a little bit further up. John Nicker, of course, with that lower finish in race two, sees him start nearer the front, but fourth position in race one means that he actually started quite well. He scored well in race one. Matt Isherwood down the inside of Nathan Anthony. Great move by Isherwood, lovely onboard shot, and now chasing Paul Mazzell. He tees up the inside. Paul's got a bit of momentum, but knows how to race, sees that Matt's got the overlap, and Matt goes through. Nice move there by the pair of these drivers here as they head up towards the mountain once again here in race three. Here's the view from Nick Bridgman coming under pressure from Will Gibson. Will from the back of the grid. John Mickel passes teammate Paul Mazzell followed by Nathan Anthony. It's Ben Higgins. Mike Schlurt being challenged there by Charlie Budd who was looking around the outside line and went on the grass, lost a, a lot of momentum there and one play, only one place actually, which probably wasn't too bad. So Mikkel, Mazel, Nathan Anthony in the 29. Through they all go. Coffee's the left-hander, into Charlie's the right, onto Park Straight. We've seen overtakes there, we've seen overtakes going up in towards the mountain as well as we ride with Will Gibson once again. Nathan Anthony goes to the outside of Paul Mazel. Ben Higgins right behind him as well. Then the number 13 car of Chris Needham in the mix as well. And that's a problem for Nathan Anthony. Something's broken on the 29 Savan. He will go off, parks the car up safely, but bitter disappointment. Now we know, because I've been getting confused about the two Savans, that is Miles Rubman in front. So last year's champion being chased by last year's runner up. Ahead of them is Paul Mazel. Rudman makes the move. Gibson's going to try and do the same, but hasn't quite got time to do it there. Paul takes the line, takes the apex on that corner, keeps the outside here in the Gigabox car. Now, what's Gibson going to do? Inside seems the most likely. If there's a gap, there is. There he goes. Gibson through will resume chase of last year's champion. Wonderful racing from the legends. A lot of people, you know, think about Campbell Park as being a motorbike circuit, and these are motorbike engine, but the fact that they're 5.8 scale cars means that they, they've not outgrown the circuit over the years. It is a tricky track, and uh, particularly tricky for the first race of the year, as Mark Beatty, now in the part lane cars machine, tries to pass the Gigabox car of Paul Vazell. Meanwhile, we go back to Gareth Sherid Sheridan there. This is second, third, and fourth all in chart. Marcus Pett, the leader, good lead over Gareth Sheridan. Connor Mills in the white and blue number 19. Connor taking that number 
from uh, I think Norwich Davey was the last driver perhaps to have the number 19 champion in 2012 now working on the JCW Mini Challenge and Connor having a look at the outside he's very much on, on the edges Connor Mills if we can get a close up and see how he's running he really is on the, the limit of adhesion look at the back end it's just tail very tail happy drifts out wide this is going to allow Matt Isherwood to have a nibble on the inside never mind the nibble he takes the full chunk and goes through into third place Sheridan second Isherwood third fourth place is Connor Mills and it's going to be a change for second Matt Isherwood is through Isherwood through into second position Marcus Pett still away and down the road in the lead but second third and fourth pretty much together Daniel Pooley having a good run at the moment in 32. He is in fifth place. Dan Pooley as they come up there. Oh, Pooley just got off having said that. Curse of the commentator. Apologies to Daniel Pooley. So John Mickle is next up now. So John will hopefully have another good score here. So it's Isherwood second. Sheridan third coming under pressure from Connor Mills. And look at the back end of Connor's car. Clearly has an issue. Not the happiest car on track. Isherwood though, the race, now Isherwood has caught the race leader, Marcus Pett the leader, has he had a problem, has he made a mistake, he's lost the lead for sure, there is another pass on the way into Coppice and the new race leader is Matt Isherwood ahead of Marcus Pett and look at Isherwood, look at the back end wanting to break away right on the limit of adhesion in this car, supercar control from him, Pett looks like he's fighting the 79 car as well, the man from Boston in second position, this is home track. Marcus will try and close back. What happened to that huge lead that he had? So it's Matt Isherwood out front. Pett giving chase again. Doesn't seem to be losing out at the moment, but it's a long lap, and we need to probably judge that over the course of the whole lap. This is it then, the battle for the lead. Marcus Pett trying to close in. Some very fast sections, some very technical sections as well as they go down here once again. Here is Luke Simmons. Had a great run in race number two, Nick Bridgman. Then Ollie Schlup, followed by Charlie Budd, Mark Beatty behind them. Charlie, the ex-mini racer. And again, Ollie Schlup, you can just see the little corrections on the steering wheel of the orange and blue K-Seal car. Absolutely superb driving from Ollie Schlup, who's done very little car racing. Hasn't come through carts like a lot of drivers do. Came through sim racing and uh, for a sim racer has transitioned into proper actual car racing superbly. A lot of them don't, but Ollie Schlup has really real, real credit this young man to the family and the formula chasing Nick Bridgman at the moment and Luke Simmons up ahead Luke will get big confidence from that podium in race number two as they go up and over the mountain once again super place to watch these legends cars Nick Bridgman running well paddock to the right of shot as we look out of the back of Bridgman's car and Ollie Schlupp busy putting him under pressure but it's Luke Simmons at the head of this gaggle at the minute and should be in a position to score some good points here as they go downhill once again out of barn corner Charlie Budd trying to get himself on the back end of, of this group Charlie's slowly but surely making his presence felt in National Legends cars racing it's John Mickle running well and now Gareth Sheridan falling back into the clutches of Will Gibson with Ben Higgins there as well and here comes Gibson about to pick off another place a man who was running second Earlier on in the race, he's passed by Gibson. Miles Rudman's going to nip around the outside as well in the van. Miles getting used to that. There's contact between Higgins and Gareth Sheridan, who spins around. That's heartbreak for Sheridan. A little bit of contact. Close quarter racing. Oh, and off goes the 1-1-3 car of Andrew Rogerson, the, I think, top rookie point scorer so far today. He's often in the tyres. He might. He's, he's firing it up. He's going to maybe try and rejoin and get some points for the rookie championship. Andrew Rogerson has driven well today as we go back to the race lead. Marcus Pett in second place, chasing Matt Isherwood. This is the penultimate lap of the third race of the day here. And the question we were asking was, did Marcus Pett have a problem? Well, if he did, it's not a persistent one because he's, he's stayed in touch with the new leader. A little bit further back, Ollie Schlup goes on the grass. Charlie Budd's going to go around the outside and uh, punish him for that moment. Are we going to see a change for the lead as they go on to the last lap? Side by side, Isherwood looks across, or the camera does slightly, and into the lead again goes Marcus Pett, who has fought back into the lead. Matt Isherwood down to second. 
Superb racing from the ledgers, but has Marcus Pett played his cards too early? The one place it's difficult to pass is Campbell Park. Isherwood's winding things up. He's going to look on the outside. Here we go. Great view of the driver side by side as they go along Park Straight. And he's got his nose in front. Isherwood back in the lead, but Marcus Pett's got the line. No, he hasn't. Isherwood leads. Oh, and Isherwood on the brakes. A little bit too deep into the corner. Has he got a problem? Marcus Pett back into the lead, so two lead changes on one lap. Pett the leader, Isherwood, and now we'll see the race leader disappearing into the distance. It looks like game over for Matt Isherwood. We're back now with Luke Simmons. Luke up ahead of Nick Bridgman, ninth and tenth positions. Oli Schlupp is in 11th, then Charlie Budd. But we go back to the race leaders up the mountain. Matt Isherwood has got it all back together. I think he's closing in on Marcus Pett again. Chris Needham, incidentally, has the fastest lap of the race. That was on lap five, just after mid-distance. But Marcus Pett, are we going to see... I think we are definitely going to see a third different winner today here at Cadwell Park. The race three win goes to Marcus Pett after heartbreak in race number one. There he is, Pett wins. Isherwood second. And it's all going off. The Campbell Park Running Cross Championship is underway. Miles Rudman on the grass. Ben Higgins on the grass as well. Third position has gone to John Mickle. John back on the podium. Will Gibson will take fourth from Rob Fountain and Miles Rudman recovering in sixth place. But three different winners Will Gibson, Andy Bird, and Marcus Pett. Three completely different race winners. Pet winning from Matt Isherwood, John Mickle, Will Gibson, Robin Fountain and Miles Rubman, six from Ben and Mark Higgins, Luke Simmons in ninth, Nick Bridgman in tenth, eleventh was Ollie Schluck from Charlie Budd, then Mark Beatty and Gareth Sheridan recovering for fourteenth, Mike Schluck fifteenth, head of Paul Mazel and Chris Needham, Tyler Reed in eighteenth from Lenny Woodcock, and the recovering, thankfully to say, Andrew Rogerson. The rest of the drivers sadly non-finishing but will be back for round two day two here at Cadwell Park which will be in our next program the cars making their way down towards Park Ferme and a chat with Chaz Draycott so Marcus final race of the day here at Cadwell you take the win on your local circuit you must be over the moon mate that was a belter yeah that was a great way to end uh, what's been a, a tricky a pretty tricky day to be fair we had an unfortunate mechanical in the last race so we knew we had to make amends for that and get a good start and um, yeah, try and try and bring home the win. What's it like using your knowledge of your local circuit to your advantage? Did you feel like you could really gain enough from that this weekend or did you just have to sort of wait and see what the other drivers brought to the party? Yeah, I think everyone at the front is running at a really high level so they've all done plenty of laps around here but I always want to do well at my local circuit, lots of family and friends supporting so it's always nice to, to do well. So Matt, didn't quite get the win in the end there, a little mistake towards the end of the race but still you must be happy with second, a great start to your season. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about that because... I, I caught up Marcus and I thought that, you know, we perhaps have the legs to, to try and get away. Um, so to throw it away on the last lap is, is a bit gutting, um, but it was such a good race. You know, probably the most fun I've had in a, in a Legends car and a race car overall. And uh, it was nip and tuck between us and, you know, Marcus just drove really well and, and defended well on the last lap. So, John, a very busy first weekend for you here at Cadwell. It's good to be back, though, isn't it, in the Legends at Cadwell? What a fantastic circuit to race these cars on. Yeah, it's fantastic, especially around here, especially when there was the sun shining. It was a bit damp this morning, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great place to come. It's a lot more colourful than it was last season as well. What's the sort of inspiration behind the livery this time around? Well, it's still quick still and quick still do just more than one brand. So the chrome wrap, what we had last year, is more for metal. Um, yellow is for plastic as, as a car goes. Uh, green is for um, water and um, blue is for marine and red is for fire. So it's all like quick still different brands they do. So we thought we'd have a bit of a change. I like that. And what's your thoughts going for the rest of the season then? Obviously there's a few exciting meetings with the British Touring Car Championship as well, which should be good fun. Yeah, they should be good fun and be exciting as well. Uh, the crowds will be good and I think we'll put on a good show for them. So who won the day overall? Well, it was Will Gibson with 480 points. Miles Rubin second on 390 and Matt Isherwood completing the podium on the day here at Cabell Park with 360. John Mickle, the man we heard from in fourth from Ben Higgins and Luke Simmons. And that wraps up our very first day of action in the 2023 Legends Cars Championship. I'm sure you'll agree it's been an absolute belter to get things underway. And of course, there's plenty more to look forward to next time. We hope to catch you then.